Hey everyone, Luke here, aka Stone Mosaic. I'm here with another comic review. It's time of Green Arrow Longbow Hunters. So as you can tell, I got signed at the Tampa Bay Comic Con, which uh, you may have already seen the video for. I uploaded that. Um, so it took me a little while to read just because I would get home from work and be exhausted. I wouldn't have, have any energy to read, but finally I sat down and read read it all, and it's basically a three-issue three prestige uh, mini-series, so, so it's about uh, 150 pages total. Um, so I, I guess it reads more like, um, like a six issues than three. Um, this is a, a pretty interesting story. It has kind of um, an older Oliver Queen as Green Arrow. He's um, he's married to Dina Lance, aka Black Canary. Um, now um, it's kind of interesting because he he wants to settle down and uh, have, have kids. She doesn't really want to because you know putting the the family in, in danger. Um, and that's an argument that DC has used for not letting their their heroes get married or be in any sort of I guess um, substantial relationship is that their their significant others will become targets, which sure you know i see their the reason behind that but but i don't think that it should preclude them from um from you know trying to make stories where the loved one isn't involved you know um i don't know it just seems like kind of a, a rule that, that that makes sense in a way but it, it doesn't it shouldn't prevent you know at least like you know one or two heroes from you know being married especially green arrow and black canary who um I certainly don't know the extent to their relationship, but it seems like they've been married or together in, in some form or fashion for a while, and, and as well as in uh, previous series. You know, I mean, there's there was, there was a series that was out I think late '90s, early 2000s or so that was called Green Arrow and Black Canary. So it seems kind of strange that they, um, of all of all couples, wouldn't be able to be together in the New 52, but. This is um, a review on the Longbow Hunter, so I'll get back to that. This basically um, involves um, uh, Green Arrow investigating these these murders of these um, older older guys who would appear the only thing they have in common is that they're they're veterans, specifically from World War II. They, they're, they're being killed by an archer. It's a pretty uh, gruesome way. So I'll, I'll get to that when I talk about the art. Um, but anyway, um, he's, he's, uh, trying to put, trying to figure out who's, who's killing these, these guys and, you know, what, what, what the reasoning is. And he, um, along the way comes across a, um, a, a Japanese woman by the name of, uh, Shadow, I believe. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm pretty sure I heard a, um, interview where Mike Grell pronounced it that way. Um, and she was basically tra trained. Um, as a child, to be a be a you know world class archer and to basically avenge her parents' deaths um, because I think her dad was was involved in some some kind of shifty behavior, some um, criminal type stuff. Although um, that sort of uh, pales in comparison to the folks that ended up capturing and then killing uh, her parents. That really gets fleshed out in, in the third book, but I won't spoil anything more be, um, beyond that. But it's a pretty interesting story. Um, this is the first thing I read by Mike Grell. Um, I definitely have to say I, I think I like his art more than his writing. No offense to his writing, I mean, it's, it's fine, it moves the story along, but it kind of, I don't know, I, I think I expect my comic book writing to be a little more than just, I don't know, standard plot boiler stuff, you know, um, then again, you know, can I write a better comic? Probably not, but yeah, I don't know, it, it didn't seem like it was my, my type of thing, but his, his art is really, really good, and, um, if I can ever get a tripod for this camera that I can, um, uh, hopefully show more art, um, during these videos, but that's, that's really the reason that you, you, you get this book. Uh, the art is really amazing, you can really see the the level of, of skill that Mike Grell has, and and, and the the pencils, the way they're um, 
way that they don't don't like uh, sometimes they don't even appear to be inked. Some some of the stuff is is really kind of watercolory, very kind of um, I don't know, very a very interesting to look at. I'm not really a, a very good um, not really a very good person to talk to about about art, except I know you know what I like and what I don't, and I definitely like girl style. So definitely pick it up if you're interested in in Green Arrow. Um, I've been getting, I've been, I've been trying to figure out the release schedule for my, my videos since I hadn't really read a lot of comics recently, but um, I already recorded a video for a trade that I had to return to the library, so I ended up reading that before I read Green Arrow, doing a video review for that, which will come out probably Wednesday or so, um, because after the whole 10-day Comic-Con thing, I wasn't sure what video I was going to review next, so I forget what, what video I said I was going to review at the end of that video. Because I, I, I do try and keep to my my statements as to what I'm going to uh, talk about next. But, um, so, so normally this would be the point where I show the book, but since I returned it to the library, um, you all have to do without it, unfortunately. But um, the next video that I'm going to upload, oh, actually, sorry, I need to give a a rating for the Longbow Hunters. I would get a, a 4 out of 5 because of the art. I think if the writing had been, I don't know, a bit different. I don't, I don't want to say better because it certainly isn't bad, but um, I don't know. The, the writing was, was alright and that, that definitely kept it from being a 5 out of 5 unfortunately, but the art, really good. Definitely get it for that reason. Hopefully the writing doesn't, doesn't, you know, you know, stick out as being particularly, you know, um, egregious or whatever, which it shouldn't. Um, but anyway, um, the next video uh, is going to be my review of um, sort of a, a, an obscure series. It was released by Caliber Comics and then I think it was reprinted by, by Image um, I think about like, like seven years ago. It was called um, The Red Diaries. It's a sort of semi-fictional account of Marilyn Monroe's diaries that she supposedly kept of a lot of information that the government wanted to keep suppressed. Um, because if, if you know anything about Marilyn Monroe, chances are you probably know about her, her dalliances with John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. And so that, that's sort of the basis behind the whole sort of uh, conspiracy storyline. And then these, this fictional paranormal kind of interesting kind of, um, investigative team is sort of put on the case for what was going on, you know, how to recover her diary and sort of plunging into this conspiracy. So definitely an interesting change of pace from something like a Green Arrow, you know, sort of a, a superhero book. Although there are some, some similarities in that they're fairly uh, grounded in their worlds. So look for um, The Red Diaries from the uh, next video I upload probably in a, a day or two, and then um, I think at, at the end of that video, I promise a James Bond comic strip review, which will probably be my my last of that series. Um, so yeah, gives you a sense of what's uh, what's coming up next. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, happy reading.